Today we're going to be talking about the Leica SL2 and my return to this system. I have made plenty of videos on this camera in the past. For a couple of years I was using it for shooting weddings, portraits, corporate marketing stuff, uh, filming my YouTube videos. This was just my all-around kind of workhorse camera. I even had the opportunity to film some videos for Leica camera all about this system. And uh, I've talked plenty about why this is just one of my all-time favorite cameras. And a couple of years ago, when I basically stepped away from shooting weddings, portrait work, I wanted to just kind of focus on personal projects. Um, I decided that I wanted to just focus on medium format film for what would be my next photo book. So I had less of a need for the SL2 system. I wasn't making money with it, so I decided to just sell my SL2 kit and just focus on medium format film for the time being. And now here we are. I've returned to this camera and I've gotten quite a bit of messages asking about this. I think specifically because I let go of the M11 monochrome in order to pick this up. So the short story is it just made sense. As with any camera purchase, I just try to go with whatever makes sense for me at the moment. Uh, I wasn't really planning on making a dedicated video about this because it's just a personal choice, but this video isn't for me. It's for everyone who has questions. Hopefully this will answer those questions and clear things up. So let's talk about it. First and foremost, my eyesight for almost a year now, I've been using the M11 system, first the M11 and then the M11 monochrome. And in that time, I've found that the speed of me using the rangefinder, it's taking me a lot longer to actually achieve focus. And you know, when I shoot the photo, it's in focus, but the time it takes me to get there, especially with the family, uh, it's just taking me a lot longer than it used to. I find that I'm just going back and forth and nothing seems to be lining up exactly to where I know what's in focus. I've been using the M6 for so long, it's not about getting used to the rangefinder, it's just that no matter how much I shoot with it, it's not getting any better, it's just getting worse. And it's taking me a lot longer to actually make the pictures that I wanna make. And when I'm shooting stuff with the family, I really don't wanna miss things. And I've found that I'm faster using an M lens adapted to the SL system, just manually focusing using the EVF. So I don't really wanna spend money on LASIK surgery twice. So, uh, you know, if my eyes are shifting on me, that's that. Another big reason for this is the lens that I'm using. Um, I recently made a video about the 35 millimeter Sumalux, the latest version that allows you to focus up close. Using this on the M11 monochrome, uh, if I want to use that close focus, you're either gonna be using the rear LCD or the EVF attachment. And I said I would you know, eventually share an update, just kind of how practical or how much I actually use the close focus feature on this lens. And turns out, I use it a lot. I'd find myself just taking advantage of that all of the time. That was really one of the main things that drew me to this lens in the first place. Using the rear LCD on the M11 monochrome isn't that bad, but I've found that especially if I'm outside at all under really any kind of daylight, it's really hard for me to see, you know, what's in focus, even with the focus peaking. So to work around that, I would sometimes throw the EVF on there. And anytime I would use that EVF, I would just think back to the SL2 EVF because one of the just biggest and sharpest, brightest EVFs on any camera that I've ever used is in the SL2. And using that little Visiflex, it's a nice kind of workaround, but Truly, it just doesn't come close to the SL2. I just really didn't enjoy using the Visiflex on the M11 monochrome. It needs to be, you know, kind of small in order to fit well on an M body, being a really small camera body. But the viewfinder and just the overall experience of it kind of suffers from that. Anytime I would use it, I just kept thinking back to the SL2 EVF, and uh, that was a big part of it. Another part of this kind of decision and being able to let go of the M11 monochrome is the fact that I still have and will always have my M6. Without a doubt, the M11 monochrome is a far more flexible and versatile camera. I was shooting it recently after the sun had already gone down at ISO 50,000 and it looks incredible. Uh, the flexibility of the files, the dynamic range, the ability to change speeds at any time, loved the flexibility of it. If I didn't still have the M6, that would have made the decision to let go of the M11 monochrome a lot harder. 
It's without a doubt my favorite digital M that I've ever used or owned, uh, period. It's an incredible camera. And despite it being a way more flexible and versatile camera, I still appreciate the limitations that the M6 and a roll of black and white film give me. I'm a fan of both, but apparently uh, I still have a very big soft spot in my heart for shooting black and white film and developing it and just the whole process. That's probably something I will never be able to shake. Another aspect of this is color. Turns out I do enjoy making color pictures despite always loving black and white. And, you know, I wanted to use the M11 monochrome specifically to eliminate even the possibility of using color just as an exercise. I wanted to really try and improve that with black and white. And for a while, I found myself anytime I saw anything, I was drawn to the color. That's what caught my eye about whatever it was that I wanted to make a picture of. And I kind of brushed that off for a while thinking it's just the fact that I don't have the option to shoot color. That's why I'm drawn to it right now. Sort of the, you know, grass is always greener type of thing. I wanted that exercise of completely eliminating color and just focusing on black and white. And I made it all of like five months. Uh, I just kept finding myself thinking back to some of my favorite color pictures that I made with the SL2. And I made the mistake of digging up those files and taking a look at them, and that pretty much settled it for me. Within a few days of having the SL2, I actually made a couple of pictures that I wasn't necessarily drawn to for the color that was there. But after the fact, I ended up making some black and white conversions just to kind of see what it would look like in black and white as opposed to color if I didn't have the color option available at all. And uh, I vastly prefer the color, so I'm glad I had that available. I was walking through Yachtanji Park and I saw this woman sitting there uh, working on a crossword puzzle just by the pond. And it was just a really beautiful, quiet kind of moment. And uh, I went up to her and asked her if I could make a couple of pictures. And she just kind of laughed and said, well, sure, I don't care. And uh, made a couple quick pictures of her there and then was on my way. And I'm really loving all of the color in these pictures. It just, to me, doesn't work as well in black and white. And I don't think the color conversions to black and white are going to hold up as well as the M11 monochrome. I still think that if you're shooting specifically for black and white, that's the best camera on the market. I absolutely love it. Um, but the color for me, it turns out that's something I do actually enjoy. So to sum it all up, all of these things just kind of slowly started building onto one another and uh, it's been on my mind a lot over the last month, month and a half, and it just felt like the right time to jump back to the SL2. On top of that, stepping away from doing portrait work and just freelancing, you know, as a photographer for hire a couple of years ago, um, I've recently gotten some opportunities to kind of dip my toes back into the water just a little bit for now, um, but I've really missed that aspect of, you know, working with photography and working with people. Um, it's been a lot of fun to kind of dip my toes back into there, and I've rented gear for those couple occasions uh, recently where I've done that, and having, you know, a camera that obviously can shoot color that was another kind of like little bonus thing that really just sort of pushed me over the edge and realized this was right for me at the time. And I've gotten a good amount of messages asking, why not just keep both? To put it simply, I just don't have it like that. Um, as much as I love Leica cameras, they are absolutely expensive. There's no way around that. Uh, I don't collect Leica cameras. I use them, and when I want to shoot with something else, I sell one to fund one. Uh, letting go of the M11 monochrome and the Visiflex completely covered the SL2 and the 24 to 70. I have three kids. I can't just go buy a new SL2 just on a whim. Uh, in order to get this camera, the M11 monochrome just had to go. Another thing I've gotten a lot of questions about is what about the SL3 that surely will be coming up sooner rather than later? Uh, at least we think, you know, I have the privilege of often checking out new Leica cameras before they're announced. M system, SL system, Q system, I've kind of covered all of them. I have absolutely zero knowledge of when an SL3 will happen, but based on the fact that the M11 and then the M11 monochrome, those two sort of generation upgrades happened earlier this year. We also got the Q3 
it kind of makes sense that the SL system would be next in line to receive, you know, a new generational jump. Now, when that will happen, who knows? Um, I'm assuming it will be sometime next year because earlier this year we got the M11 monochrome and then shortly after that, the Leica Q3. I'm assuming it'll be next year and not this year, but who knows? I had been thinking about waiting for the SL3, potentially waiting until next year, uh, but with everything I've mentioned in this video, it all just kind of built on one another and it felt like the right time to just pick up an SL2. Uh, who knows what the actual upgrades will be in the SL3, but I already knew I was extremely happy with the SL2. I've used it in a number of different scenarios and everything it's capable of. Uh, it wasn't really rolling the dice picking this camera up since I've already been so familiar with it. And one very silly reason for me to get the SL2 is the fact that we have a silver edition. This is a limited edition of the SL2, only a thousand of these in the world. And uh, I've just always been wanting a silver SL2. I remember like three years ago posting pictures of a silver R8 and just saying like, imagine what an SL2 would look like in this silver finish. And here we are. Uh, it just looks incredible. I know it's ridiculous, but I'm a sucker for silver cameras. Uh, the wrap on this thing feels extremely similar to my M6, as does the silver finish. And uh yeah, I'm just a sucker for it, so I had to get this one. So hopefully that answers some of the questions that you've had on the SL2 and what made me pick this up and let go of the M11 monochrome. It's always just personal preference for me with this kind of thing, whatever feels right for me at the time. As always, I am not trying to say which camera is better or which camera you should use. This is just where I share where my head's at and what I'm up to. Of course, if you have any other questions about this, you can leave them in the comments down below and we'll keep the conversation going. But with all of that out of the way, I'd like to just hang out a little bit longer with all of you and share some updates on uh, videos that are coming up. I'm coming to Brooklyn soon, so if you want to meet up and hang out, I'll tell you all about that prints that I have available, this YouTube video setup that I have going today, talk a little bit more about that. It's all a little inside baseball, I guess, but you're all the ones that watch these videos, so I'd kind of like to just catch up with you all a bit. So if you're interested in any of that, stick around. We'll get into it right after I tell you about our sponsor today, Squarespace. When I first created mattdayphoto.com 10 years ago, I did it with Squarespace. This was long before they ever decided to sponsor my channel, but I chose Squarespace because it was just a no-brainer. They had everything I needed in one place, and all these years later, they're still continuing to build and add new features to their service, all while keeping it extremely easy to use while you do it yourself. Drag and drop customization, tons of different templates to choose from, along with 24-7 award-winning customer service that are always there when you need them. You can share your work there, have a place where people can contact you or even schedule appointments. You can even set up your own online store. Since I launched mattdayphoto.com, I've sold my own zines, photo books, prints, and merch all through my own website, no need to use a third-party service, and they also have tons of different plugins from third parties to keep everything in one place. Keeping track of your inventory, shipping fulfillment, it's all a breeze with their built-in tools. It's never been easier to build your own website, and you can start a free trial by going to squarespace.com slash mattday. Use the promo code MATTDAY at checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. First update, new video coming on the Mint Instant Flex TL70 Plus. It's a long name, but a great camera. I've been shooting with this for a couple of weeks, really having a lot of fun with it, and I'm excited to share the video on that. I'm also going to be doing a video on sort of my summer photo book haul. You know, I've picked up a lot of books this summer, and I want to just give you a quick look at all of them. It's probably going to be a long video, so if you're interested in that and seeing more of the books that I picked up, there's a lot of really, really good ones there, so I'm really excited to share those with you. Brooklyn Film Camera. I am coming to Brooklyn, New York, September 7th. There will be an opening for my show at the shop there. Uh, I'll be sharing some photos from my upcoming book, Surveyor. Super, super thankful for Kyle and everyone there at Brooklyn Film Camera for having me. It'll be my first time in New York, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully I can see some of you all there and uh, just hang out on the opening night. That's September 7th at Brooklyn Film Camera. If you want to come meet up, say what's up. Uh, I would love to meet any of you there. So yeah, 
I'm really looking forward to that. Should be fun. Big shout out to Tyler Woodford as well for helping me get my prints framed up and ready for the show. I shipped everything his way in Brooklyn. That way he could get it ready and drop off at the shop. Tyler, you're the man. Really, really appreciate you. With that in mind, I also have prints available on my site. These are all prints from my new book, Surveyor. So this is sort of a fundraiser sale to help fund the production of the book. Uh, I'm self-publishing, so the production cost on everything up front, that's all on me. So if you're interested in purchasing a print from this book, uh, this is the first time I'm offering any of the prints. So if you'd like a print, I'll have links down below. Really appreciate the support. And lastly, let's talk about this little YouTube setup that I've got today. For almost two years now, I was using the Sony FX3 for filming all of my YouTube videos. Uh, when I sold the SL2 system, I wanted to get just a dedicated video setup. The Sony FX3 is an amazing camera, and I enjoyed absolutely none of it. Um, it was the best easiest, you know, cinema camera, video camera that I have ever used. It was extremely reliable. It has tons of features. It's extremely versatile, but I kind of bought it with that in mind thinking this is incredible. I'm going to be so much more likely to film videos and make more videos and it's got a flip screen so I can film myself. And that's just not me at all. Uh, so after I picked up the SL2, I set it up for video again, just like I always used to, took a look at the L-Log footage, and I was like, yep, I can let go of the FX3 now. Uh, I just love the footage from the SL2. Now, to film this video with the SL2, I wouldn't really be able to show it and talk about it. And I've had this little Sony ZV-1 for about a year, maybe more than that. And I've just never really gotten myself to use it. Um, I filmed a little bit of stuff here at home with the kids, just easy point and shoot filming. Um, but I realized it makes a really nice, compact and simple setup. I've been wanting to get into streaming and doing live streams where we can look at books, edit photos, Q&A, just sort of hang out. And uh, I wanted to kind of set this up as a little test for live streams because it is great for that. Then I realized this could also work as just the normal sort of talking head thing. Uh, normally, I'll have a camera on a tripod set up here on my desk with a monitor and all of this stuff. And it's, you know, all pretty full frame. Who really cares about the talking head stuff? Like I just sit here for most of these videos where I'm actually talking. Um, I'm not out vlogging or shooting cinematic stuff. Uh, do you guys care about this sort of setup? How do you think this looks? Uh, it's incredibly simple and it's just kind of set up to always be ready to go. And I don't have to set up my photo camera or anything to get ready to shoot video. It's just been on my mind and I'm, I'm testing it out here. This is sort of the, uh, the guinea pig video here. So if you like this setup, if it doesn't really matter to you one way or the other, any thoughts at all, uh, just just let me know in the comments down below because I would like your feedback on that. If I have a setup here that's always ready to go and I can make more videos as a result of that, ultimately that's the idea here. So let me know if you're interested in that as well as uh, joining for some live streams where we just hang out, talk about photos, photo books, uh, all of the above. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm interested in your feedback. That's it for today. I've talked plenty enough. Thank you all for watching. I love you guys, and I'll see you soon.